Hello everyone, Anod Medic here and in this video we will learn about the clinical approach to fever. Whenever you attend your clinical postings in your hospital, the most common chief complaint while history taking is fever. Now, for diagnosis, fever is a very key component. So now what we have to do is we have to know how we can characterize fever so that we can take an effective history and can reach to a diagnosis. Now there are around six attributes of fever that we need to characterize fever. So those attributes are temperature, then onset of that temperature, the T is time frame of the fever, right? F refers to fluctuation of the fever. And finally, R refers to rigor. That means whether the fever was associated with shivering or not. And finally, resolution, how the fever resolves. Now, this can be remembered using the simple mnemonic total fire. That means the body goes into a state of total fire when you get your fever, right? So let's one by one go into the attributes. Now, the first attribute is temperature. Now, based on temperature, we can classify fever in different ways. Now the normal temperature range for human beings is the 98 Fahrenheit to 99 Fahrenheit. And this 98 to 99 Fahrenheit shows a daily fluctuation, daily fluctuation of around 1.5 degree Fahrenheit. Right. Now, this is the normal criteria and this fluctuation, the peak occurs at around 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Right, this is important. That means the normal body temperatures are also not fixed. It varies in day. Now, if the temperature is more than 99 Fahrenheit, then we call this pyrexia or fever. Right. And if the temperature is more than 106 degree Fahrenheit, then that is known as hyperpyrexia. Okay. Similarly, if the temperature is below 98 Fahrenheit, we call that subnormal. But if the temperature is below 95, then we call that hypothermia. Right. So hypothermia, subnormal, normal, pyrexia, and hyperpyrexia, right? So now when, in what situations you see hyperpyrexia, that is very important. Now, our focus over here will be on hyperpyrexia and hypothermia because these are relatively new to you, right? So now hyperpyrexia can be seen in cases of malaria, in case of septicemia, right? In case of heat stroke, etc. Whereas you will get to see hypothermia in case of myxedema coma, In case of hypoglycemia, in case of blood loss, etc. Right. So this is all about the temperature in case of fever. Now we go to the idea of onset. Now the onset of fever can be abrupt onset or it can be gradual onset. Right. So abrupt onset, that means all of a sudden you get a, you, your body gets heated up and you get a fever. So this is generally seen in case of E. coli pyelitis. Right. And in case of pneumonia. This is, these are the more co most common abrupt onset fevers. Whereas gradual fever is seen in case of mainly uh, your typhoid and tuberculosis. So it's miliary tuberculosis and typhoid. Now in typhoid, if you notice, we see a very queer phenomenon. The fever rises in a staircase phenomena, right? Suppose 100, then 101 for a few hours, then 102 for a few hours, then 103 for a few hours. This is known as staircase phenomena. Right, this is very important from exam point of view. And this is known as stepladder pyrexia. A very characteristic feature of typhoid. Right. So this is all about onset. It can be abrupt or gradual. And in gradual, remember stepladder pyrexia. Right. Now we can go to the time frame of fever. Now the fever can be alternating or it can be relapsing. Now let's do relapsing. What's the fever relapsing? That means if you see malaria, in malaria you'll get to see that suppose in case of plasmodium vivax malaria, you get, uh, there's suppose day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six. On day one, you get fever. On day two, you don't get fever. And again, day three, you get a fever. Day four, you don't get a fever. Day five, you get a fever. So the fever relapses every second day or the fever relapses with a gap of one day in between. So this is relapsing fever. Now, based on that in malaria, we have different types of fever names. Like we have tertian malaria, quaternion malaria, quotidian malaria, etc. that we will do later on in fluctuations. Right. So this is the idea of relapsing fever. The fever, the fever is relapsing. Whereas in alternating fever is same as relapsing, but on a greater time scale. Now over here, relapsing is on basis of days, but alternating a pattern is seen in a matter of months. For example, over here, you have two types, uh, two types of pattern under it. Now there can be a regular alteration or there can be an irregular alteration. Right. Now, what is a regular alteration for, uh, suppose you get, to, you get to see a fever 
over here in a month suppose you get to see a fever rises up and then comes down over a period of say, maybe 7 to 10 days then again the next 7 to 10 days there's no fever then after again 7 to 10 days the fever rises and falls right so the same relapsing pattern but on a greater time scale in the in the scale of weeks or months so that is a regular interval but what happens in an irregular interval maybe suppose for 3 uh, days you get a fever then after that you have a gap of 10 days then you get get fever for 6 days maybe then you get a gap for 2 days and then again fever so this is irregular alternation of fever so i believe now you understand what is alternating fever and relapsing fever both are both are similar concepts but the difference is in is their time frame now alternating regular alternating fever has a term that term is known as pale abstain fever very important name from exam point of view pale abstain fever and this pale abstain fever is seen in case of lymphoma particularly the hodgkin hodgkin's lymphoma and sometimes in tuberculosis so pale abstain fever is a very important part that is regular alternating fever right now we go to the next concept that is fluctuations okay now what is fluctuation so for that we have to understand what the temperature ranges that we just did now over here 98 to 99 fahrenheit temperature is considered to be normal and that is considered to be the baseline right and over here we have a graph showing the variation of temperature right now there can be three types of cases let me show you one by one so the first type of case will be a case that i'm drawing with black suppose the temperature goes up then again temperature comes down for a bit and then again temperature goes up and temperature comes down this is the scenario that means every time the temperature comes down the temperature touches the baseline right so this is happening within one day or one or two days theek hai so very short duration okay now there can be other situations of fevers like for example you can have another variation of fever like uh, temperature rises this way and then the variation is almost nil and it's never touching the baseline right so this can be another case or you can have another fever type that i'm drawing with red that is a fever rises then it fluctuates then again rises rises fluctuates again rises right now i believe you can see clear difference between all the three types now let us understand one by one so now there can be one case where the fever is touching the baseline that is the black one so that what was the black one that is known as your intermittent fever it is known as intermittent well fever for once touches the baseline now intermittent fever is seen in case of malaria like you can have tertian fever what is tertian fever on day 1 on day 1 you get fever day 2 you don't have fever day 3 you get fever day 4 you don't have fever so there's a relapse or there's fluctuation in the temperature in every second day right so or it can be your quarter quartern fever that means there's a gap of 2 days in between that means the fever is on the first day and then again fever is on the fourth day in between you have two days off right so this is the fluctuation of temperature in intermittent or you can have another situation which is known as quotidian that is you are getting fever every day so the fluctuation is present the temperature at some point of time is touching the baseline but the fever is present every day so that means you get uh, every day you have a fever but in between you have relapses so fever is every day but in between you have temperature touching the baseline so this is seen in case of septicemia very important to remember right so this is the basic idea of intermittent fever now we will come to the fevers which are not touching the baseline that is the blue line and the red line over here right now in case of blue line if you see the fluctuation in temperature is very small and that fluctuation is less than 1.5 fahrenheit but whereas in case of red line if you see the fluctuation in temperature is very high that is more than 2 degree fahrenheit okay the fluctuation now based on that we have two more types of fevers what are those if it can be your continuous type that means fluctuations less than 1.5 fahrenheit right this is seen in case of pneumococcal pneumonia meningitis miliary tuberculosis etc or you can have uh, another situation where there's this is known as remittent fever that means the temperature fluctuation is more than 2 degree fahrenheit okay that is seen in case of uti amoebic liver abscess etc right now this was all about the fluctuation now there's one point that i would like to mention about fluctuation that is known as hectic temperature right there's something known as hectic temperature 
Now, hectic temperature is a more severe form of intermittent fever. More severe form. Right. Now, what happens in hectic temperature? Basically, the temperature uh, the temperature rises to more than 5 degree Fahrenheit in the night, but touches baseline in the day, which and comes back to baseline with sweating. So this is a very classical phenomenon. As the sun sets in the evening and night, the temperature rises up. The temperature goes so high that the daily variation of temperature is more than 5 degree Fahrenheit and the temperature remains in the night and the, the temperature comes down to baseline to touch the baseline in the day and the temperature lowering is accompanied by sweating. Right. So since this is touching the baseline, we will call this an intermittent fever, but this is a very severe kind of intermittent fever because the temperature fluctuations are very high. So this is known as hectic temperature. This is also seen in case of tuberculosis. Right. And septicemia. Okay. So this is an, again another important exam point that is hectic temperature, which is a special type of intermittent fever. Now we have rigor. So now why rigor occurs? Rigor is the shivering that accompanies fever. So this is due to construction uh, constriction of of skin vessels, right? Mainly three causes are there which causes shivering. Now, mainly in case of parasitic infection or parasitic infestation, I should say, not infection. That is malaria. In case of malaria, you get a shivering or in case of E. coli infection, you get a shivering or there can be blood transfusion or some drug infusion. Like in case of sometimes intermittent infusion of antipyretics like aspirin causes rigor. Okay, so there can be parasitic infestation, like as in case of malaria, there can be E. coli infection or there can be transfusion or infusion. So these things causes rigor. So remember the three causes of rigor. If you see rigor, you have to think in this line. Then finally, we come to the resolution of the fever. We have talked a lot about fever and now we are coming to the resolution part. Now resolution can be by crisis or by lysis. Now resolution crisis means there's a very speedy recovery from the fever within six to 12 hours. And this occurs after antibiotic treatment or treatment with antipyretics. Whereas lysis means the fever goes down, but resolution is over a few days, right? For example, suppose over here, there are days like sixth day of the fever, seventh day, eighth day, ninth day, 10th day. So on sixth day, the fever reaches the peak and slowly, slowly the temperature goes down and, the, uh, and on the 10th day, it reaches the baseline. So this is known as lysis. Now this lysis can again show a step ladder pattern. As onset showed a step ladder pattern, the lysis can also show a step ladder pattern. So lysis can be a step ladder pattern as well. So nowadays lysis is generally not commonly seen but if a drug is not working, then you can see a lysis pattern of fever resolution. Previously, when there were no antibiotics, untreated cases used to follow the lysis pathway for resolution, right? So this is all about fever, the clinical approach to fever. I believe you have understood the clinical approach to the fever. If you have liked this video, please hit the like button, share this video among your friends and peers of medical school. And for more such amazing content, press the subscribe button, press the bell icon and put the notification to all. Until then, bye bye. See you in the next one.